Talk Express. Your voice in the mortgage industry. Each week on this program, Jeff and his guests share their expertise, personal anecdotes, and the latest industry news to keep you in the loop. Now to provide you with insight and help you navigate the consistently changing world of real estate lending, here is your host for the mortgage voice, Jeff Barton. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Jeff Barton, your voice in the mortgage industry, and thank you very much for tuning into the show. We are here on a terrific day in the middle of summer. Uh, yes, it is summer, and I know there's a lot of people running around with their kids or looking for some place to live or rent uh, in the fall time. This is what they call the heightened uh, sweet spot in the spring buying season turning into summer buying season. There is a, a, um, a window by which I third or or uh, uh, 40% of the homes in our area will get sold within this time frame. And it, and it always becomes the pressurized uh, time frame for a seller because the seller wants to sell now. They don't want to say, okay, this is what the market is. You're going to have to wait three, six months before it sells. No, they want to sell now. And because we've had such a demand on housing in Southern California over the last, oh, pick a year, four years, five years, whatever it is, We've seen prices rise, mortgage rates rise, and inventories shrink. And because of that, sellers have an out, you know, moded look at the way it is in terms of how quickly their house is going to sell. So if you're one of these people, you've got kids, you got a new job, you got to move, and you're looking around for a house, I really understand uh, where you're coming from and how you feel. Uh, again, I'm Jeff Barton. This is The Mortgage Voice. If you want to see and hear this show, you can go to YouTube. Jeff Barton, The Mortgage Voice is our YouTube channel. Uh, if you want to hear on Saturday and Sunday driving around in the IE, go to kcaa.com, and that is our radio station affiliate. Uh, we've been with them for, oh, a long, long time, and uh, they do a great job at promoting what we do for you, which is bring you real-time information about what's going on in the mortgage market and the hows and the whys of uh, the situation and where we are and how we got there and how we can get out of that. Now, we also bring to the show a lot of experts, experts in the field of actual mortgages, actually a real estate agent, people who can say, this is how I see it, this is my business today, and these are the things I can do to help you understand what's going on. You want to use me? You don't want to use me? That's fine. But they're gracious enough to come on the show and share the information, uh, whether it's the interest rates and where they've been stuck like a rock in midair on a throwout. Um, you can see 7% as a persistent, you know, six to eight month mortgage interest rate, kind of where we've been and where we're going to continue to be, even though we see some movement, and I say some movement, towards interest rate cuts by the Fed. We're going to get into a bunch of this stuff, and we're going to talk about exactly what the Fed's next move is. Uh, and we've seen some new information come out, uh, the unemployment rate. We've seen uh, inflation data coming out later. Uh, and by the time of the airing of this show, we will have inflation data. We're probably going to see slight decrease in the inflation. We're going to see um, people getting excited about the inflation being under control uh, and at the same time wanting the Fed to cut interest rates. So tangentially, mortgage interest rates follow as well. Now, in looking historically at where we are in the interest rate climate, 7%, I said, is a 30-year fix. I'll go through that way there. 6.76 is a 30-year fix, a little bit better. In the 15 years, at 5.98. FHA is at 6.48. The 5.1 arm is at 6.5%. And the VA loan is at 5.87. The 2 years at 4.624. And the 10 years at 4.27. Now, we've had that divergent in the 2 and the 10, and how the 2 is uh, obviously worth more. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, yes, is yielding more than the 10-year and has been for over two years, and why that may be significant now as a poor 10 for uh, coming recession. We have a number of different indicators as the economy has cooled because of the interest rates that the Fed has higher for longer, and people now are no more nervous about slowing economy turning into uh, recessionary mode and you know that never bodes well for anybody so pick your poison you want high or at least somewhat high um, inflation or do you want 
the economy that's somehow lessening in terms of the power of what it is for you and me to be able to go out there and buy a house. Unemployment insurance, uh, Social Security, other things that uh, are, are there as a backstop. We haven't seen really increases in any of these things uh, in terms of outlays for either the federal or the state in terms of how we're looking at unemployment. So, yes, all these things are to be considered. Let's go through a few things uh, that I have on my list here today rather than just riffing off the top of my head. Sorry about that. Employment uh, adds 206,000 jobs last month. Now, that's right in line with where they are in terms of the cooling of the labor market. Uh, they, Jerome Pyle had a, had a number of different things he's talked about. He's doing some testimony, and you may catch some of his testimony. Uh, you can either do it on YouTube or uh, look at some of your you know, favorite financial channels and catch some of the highlights. Uh, two quotes I want to give to you what Jerome Powell said. Uh, we now face two-sided risks. Now, what does that really mean? Two-sided risks. We've had inflationary risks, right? obviously, and now we have economy risks, meaning that, okay, if inflation is under control, but we've seen the economy cool to a certain extent that we may be sliding towards um, a negative growth, which, as everyone knows, a couple of quarters in a row of negative growth, you're in a recession. Are we headed that way? So there are two-sided risks. As long as we've been higher for longer, inflation has you know, has come under control. Beginning of the year, not so much, but now we've seen uh, inflation, as I say, continue its downward trend, as it has been uh, after it reached its high of about 9% a couple of years ago. But there is the danger that that will lead us into recession. So the, the mandate for the Fed, right, is low unemployment and uh, uh, growth uh, with the economy. So are they achieving these things? Uh, and that's where we are with Jerome Powell. Uh, the second quote I want to quote to you is, quote, labor markets appear to be fully back in balance. So if we're talking about employment, where are you? You're driving around, you're listening to me, you're seeing me on YouTube, wherever it is that you get this information, how's your job? How secure do you feel where you're working? Uh, we see some of the employment numbers uh, of the 206,000 that were hired last month, a lot of them in government. Is that a good thing, or is that what we do when we're going into a recession? Government ups their hiring and therefore uh, tries to keep the numbers of people unemployed as low as possible as we go through whatever it is. Now, I'm not saying it's a recession, but uh, in terms of what they're talking about employment-wise and the people who are hired and working in these sectors, uh, everybody's a little bit nervous. So. That's why uh, when we talk about these things right now, um, is this the best time to buy a house? There, there's a, a several different factors in terms of buying a house, as everybody knows. One, you have to have the money to be able to afford it. Two, there has to be availability of housing. And there is still a lack of housing opportunity and availability here in SoCal. Uh, we talk uh, throughout the year about all the exodus of people that go from here to other states and there's such a big thing oh it's this it's that you know what it really is people can't afford a house that's that's the bottom line of it if you could afford your house you probably wouldn't leave here because it's a weather wise it's a great place to live um just the lifestyle itself the way california has a, a different mentality about itself and how itself presents to the people that live here. Um, now, you may not like taxes. You may not like uh, other certain things that the government does. Heck, I don't like them either. However, when it comes to those statistics of people leaving California, it's really about housing affordability, and we've had such a lack of it. Now, conversely, if you own a home, we always talk about it, you're happy as heck, and you're happy as heck because your house value has gone up 40% in the last three years, four years. That's amazing. You buy for a million, it's now worth a million four. That's pretty good in terms of you know what your house is worth today and what you can do with that particular equity in your home. We talk about that. We'll talk about it again today. We'll talk about HELOCs. We'll talk about seconds. We'll talk about um, redoing your first if, in fact, rates ever come down around the 6% rate. If you have a 5% mortgage, the difference is 100 bucks per 100,000. So if it's a you know $300,000 house, you're going to pay another $300 in mortgage interest 
in terms of getting equity out of your house and being able to afford a 6% versus 5% mortgage. Anyway, I'm Jeff Barton, your voice in the mortgage industry. Really appreciate you listening to the show, and we will be right back. You're listening to The Mortgage Voice with Jeff Barton. We'll be right back with more in just a moment. For questions or comments, send emails to info at malibufunding.net. Now, back to The Mortgage Voice with your host, Jeff Barton. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Jeff Barton, your voice in the mortgage industry. And thank you very much for listening to the show. As you listen to us each and every week, you can catch us on the usual suspects, but also we have a number of different podcasts that you might be able to tag into, especially if you already have. Daryl, do you have a list of those, please? Yes, I do, Jeff. It's <laughs> Excellent. Uh, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Spreaker, Stitcher, iHeartMedia. Odyssey, YouTube, podclips.io, and themortgagevoice.com. Mortgagevoice.com. That's our website. Go there. You can see and hear all the guests that come on the show, and you can contact them directly. And podclips.io. I'm pitching them all the time. Great place to go to get a central way that you can plug into all your favorite podcasting uh, wants and needs. Uh, and again, podclips.io, that's a good place to go. Okay, so we were talking earlier in a segment about what's happening uh, generally across a lot of what's going on uh, in the economy or what's going on in terms of inflation versus unemployment versus where are we standing with the interest rates? A lot of good things. Let's get right to some news to use section. Okay, this is a quote, and you have to guess who said it. Unless there is a significant surge in the rate of unemployment, which is currently not in the forecast, unless there is a significant surge in the rate of unemployment, which is currently not in the forecast. That means uh, if, in fact, we do get a surge in unemployment, we will definitely see the uh, Fed drop interest rates. So where are we and who said it? Lawrence Yun, that's right. Nobody would have guessed that. He's the chief economist for the California Association of Realtors. We go to him uh, pretty much when we're in these transition periods. And right now we're in one. Uh, we've seen inflation really cool. We've seen, as uh, Jerome Powell said, the labor market has really come back into balance. That would mean that it's pre-pandemic levels. Uh, and in that particular time period, where were we? What were we doing uh, before pandemic hit and all the unemployment and then the reemployment? And now we have a balancing out. W another thing to indicate the balancing out, I don't know if people remember, but I harped on what a uh, cost of lumber was in the uh, pandemic and how it had gotten so out of whack. It it really is $400, $450 within that range of 1,000 board feet. That's what lumber costs. So you're building a house, you got to figure that in. So costs during the recession for building a house really went out of whack with what traditionally they were. And they went up to 1,600 feet per 1,000 board feet. $1,600 when it was $400. So uh, uh, Mortgage News Daily came out with their chart, and I just thought it was interesting to look at, of what the board feet cost today. In February and March of 2021, $1,640 per 1,000 square foot of board feet. Today, $440 per 1,000 board feet. Now, that's, that's right in line with where it was prior to and this is where it is today. Now, we don't see a reduction in that number, but we don't see it really inflationary way above where it should be, uh, where it was uh, during uh, the pre-pandemic level. So this is pretty interesting, uh, and I think there's a lot of products out there that are going to be like that. There, Let's see. I have a chart here as well about some of the things that cost less um, and have come down in prices to whereby we're looking and comparing them to uh, pre-pandemic type of prices. Hotel prices have come down. Rent, rental costs for housing have really come down. And um, car sales, lower prices for them as well. This shows a weakness in demand, which is why the actual economy, I mean, the uh, prices for these three things have come down and why we see things like, you know, building materials for housing has also come down. Where will we be in six months, a year? Really depends on what happens with uh, government spending, what happens with the inflationary nod. Are we going to go into one? Are we not going to go into one? We're back to that again. And will the Fed reduce the cost of borrowing interbank, which in, in turn reduces the cost for mortgages, which of course in turn unlocks 
all that equity, which would really spur demand. That's really where we're heading, I think. I don't know if it'll be this year or next year. It just really depends. If we have a change in uh, rider at the top of the presidential run here and we get uh, Don Trump in again, well, that will spur certain economic activity because cutting taxes and, you know, cutting regulation, that's always a Republican way by which they can stimulate. If we get up a, a more of a, a Biden swing into this thing, we will get more government spending. Both of these guys are not going to do a thing about the debt unless we get into um, the military versus social spending kind of argument, which I don't know, you know, <laughs> to me, when you're bailing people out or you're helping people out with contracts from the government, what's the difference if you're spending on one versus another? I think uh, one way to look at it is that if we had a total reduction in spending, that would be good long term. But is, is it good for me who wants to buy a house tomorrow? No, not really. Uh, I did see an article today that was incredibly interesting saying that the people who are going to pay for the huge burgeoning, uh, burgeoning, I hate that word, but the huge debt that the government has thrown upon us, $33 trillion, has gone up about $20 trillion in the last 15 years through the Gulf War, war uh, yeah, the Gulf War, uh, Afghanistan War, uh, the tax cuts, uh, you know, all these things have really added, like doubled the deficit. But it's going to come down to baby boomers having to pay. Now, what does that mean? I don't know what that means. The article didn't say. But my suspicion is the taxes on uh, inheritance, taxes on transferring wealth are all going to go up. And this is how these particular bills are going to get paid. I, for one, I'm in that age range. I don't know exactly what exactly that means for me. Uh, does it mean my property tax goes up? No, because that's not federal. What would it mean? Would it mean a age bracket kind of increase? I, I don't know. But I do know, according to this article, that's what it said. So uh, take it for what it is. 54% of home prices rise. Okay, so 54% is the number. I said 40%. Since 2019, the, uh, the average home in the U.S. has risen in price 54%. That's a lot. <laughs> that's 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 not the a uh, million to a million four. That's a million to a million five. That's incredible. Million five forty, as a matter of fact. So those people out there, like myself, maybe this is what the tax is going to be. It's a tax on uh, unrealized debt. I mean, unrealized uh, increase in the value of your home. Um, I was thinking a couple weeks ago, just about okay. So if we took half of the increase that people have gotten in their homes, refinance our homes, and paid it to the government in a tax, would that in fact buy down the debt? I think it would. Uh, and I think buying down the debt for our kids and grandkids is probably the best thing we could do in order to ensure um, the U.S. has the economic legs to be able to withstand whatever you know economic issues come up, whether it's a war, whether it's weather, and weather is killing us, by the way. I don't know if anyone was watching Hurricane Barrel or the fires in Southern California that are just burning really nonstop. And apparently, um, we had the fire department come to my house the other day, and they were saying, look, it's not the dryness per se, although that's bad. It's the wind. You can't control the wind, and it's unbelievable. I know from my own house, I can uh, attest, over the last two or three years, when it blows, it's blowing 50, 60 miles an hour, and you get caught up in some kind of fire issue or uh, the dryness and a spark, My, that, that's what's pushing fires through uh, not only here, but in Arizona, Utah, a number of other states have experienced the same kind of wildfire. We're lucky we got our insurance. I know we talked about the the, the, the horribleness of having to cut all our vegetation away from the house and being able to, you know, uh, get that fire certificate so that we can bring it to our insurance company and say, hey, look, we have this fire certificate from a third-party country, a company, rather, and, and they've given us the ability to say, hey, look, we've done everything we can to prevent fire. Give us our insurance, which they did. But from the insurance standpoint, oh, my gosh, can you imagine trying to predict the loss that you're going to get Every time there's a fire, especially in Southern California where the population is dense, I mean, some areas of California, it, there's nobody there, so let it burn, right? But in, in a lot of areas where there's a lot of brush, yeah, that's a problem. Anyway, I'm Jeff Barton, your voice in the mortgage in industry. Really appreciate you listening to the show, and uh, we'll be right back. You're listening to The Mortgage Voice with Jeff Barton. 
We'll be right back with more in just a moment. For questions or comments, send emails to info at malibufunding.net. Now, back to The Mortgage Voice with your host, Jeff Barton. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Jeff Barton, your voice in the mortgage industry. Thanks very much for tuning into the show, listening to us on a weekly. Uh, we come to you Saturday and Sunday, driving around, all the things you do in order to get those days done, whether it's you're going to church or you're going to the hardware store or you're just driving the kids around, find something to do. We are on KCAA, AM and FM signals. We're on the big hill, and we have a signal that carries all over the place, out to Palm Springs and uh, west to Los Angeles County, south to Orange County and North Inyo. But San Bernardino and Riverside counties, that's our bread and butter, and we like to bring to you each and every week things that will help you decide whether you're going to buy a house, whether you need to sell a house, or whether you're just in the market or not in the market. There's certainly a lot of signs one way or the other, but I'm not the expert on this area. The guy I bring on usually to talk about it is George Gonzalez, and I'm lucky enough to have him again today. He works over at Southland Mortgage. George, how are you? Hey, Jeff. Thanks for having me on. I'm doing excellent. How, how are you over there at the beach? You know, oh, man, you had to throw that out there. You know, <laughs> the beach is nice, except sometimes it's a little cold, to be honest. Oh, yes. <laughs> you like to rub that in? <laughs> oh, it's a slap in the face, my IE. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. I'm sorry. And that's not true. I just said that because I knew it. All right. So speaking of hot, now we've gone through the spring buying season, which according to you know, several sources was kind of a bust. Where are we right now in, in terms of both inventory and houses available, and how is the market out there in the IE? Well, those are those are awesome questions. So uh, we can start with the inventory. Um, out here in the, in the Inland Empire, you know, Ontario, Rancho Cucamonga, right. Fontana, uh, Rialto, San Bernardino, all these areas over here are okay. I mean, it's there, there are some uh, – there's more inventory. Let's put it that way. Good. There's more inventory – um, I've seen in the recent a uh, few price reductions on properties. Okay. Um, longer times to sell, which means there you know more days on the market. Um, before, as you know, the last year, two years, they were flying off within 15, 20 days. Right. Sold. Um, now I think we're up to somewhere averaging 45 to 75 days on the market, depending on you know on the area. Sure. Sure. So, okay. The hot but, areas out there are where, George. The, the hot areas are the northern part of Fontana okay. area and uh, the northern part of Rancho Cucamonga area. Okay, and now, that's because the houses are great and the school system's great and all the infrastructure that you need for, you know, that kind of price. What what are the prices they're getting for those houses out there? So if, if you're looking, let's say a standard uh, uh, three bedrooms, two bath in northern Rancho Cucamonga, is probably in the 800, 850,000 range to start. Okay, yeah. Um, the North Fontana, that, which has the same quality of the houses, maybe a little bit newer, um, same sizes and all that good stuff. You're looking uh, somewhere in the range of probably seven hundred thousand ish, so about a seven fifty, about a hundred, hundred fifty thousand difference uh, after the freeway. That the freeway divides the values. Right. Right. Okay. All right. So. Now, we talk about the real estate, the real estate inventory and why it's gone up and that uh, the affordability index here in Southern California is terrible. Um, what, what is the, the magic mix that we have uh, enough houses on the market where prices come down, yet at the same time when we have lower interest rates, we don't see a rush back into the market pushing the prices back up? Is there sort of a Venn diagram I can send people to to figure this out? Well, the thing about it is, you know, this is the first time in history, as we all know, where interest rates are high as well as housing prices are right. high. Typically, it's, you know, one or the other. Right. Uh, you know, and, and balance it out a little bit. So at, you know, at this point, the thing that I'm looking for is I'm telling my buyers is, you know, I had a few of them waiting for, for such a long time. And then finally, I said, look, let's let's not wait anymore. Let's just jump on something. Um, and get you somewhere and something that you need now for your family. And, you know, later on down the line, hopefully when the rates come down, we can drop your, your payment, um, which will, you know, you'll still get the house you want, except you're just paying a little more up front for it, but you'll get it back in the long run. And Are, are you suggesting yeah. to people that they, they um, uh, put more of a down payment so that the payment between a higher-priced house, one, you know, they're paying uh, with 7% mortgage or they're about 30-year fixed rate, or are you just saying, look, let's just get in uh, at the cheapest amount uh, and go for the longer-term payment, like a 40-year? 
and again, well, that, those are the two options I give them. It's right. case by case, right. um, you know, and I just let them, I, I present them the, the payments in comparison with each other and, you know, and they make the decision on what's best for them. Um, and so, you know, not, not every, obviously not every scenario is perfect for the next, for the next person. Um, so yeah, that's, that's basically what I do. If they can afford it and they're comfortable, why, why are they waiting? They have right. the money for the down payment. There's no reason to wait. You know, you, you need to buy a house. You need somewhere to live. Right. It's, it's, it's not like a car. It's not like, you know, a, a TV. This is something that, you know, you're going to be living in. And, you know, it, it's hard for people to get that because of the last, what we just went through all their families and friends bought sure. them at three percent and throwing it in their face and so you know that's what's really really been the hiccup is the people that got the low rate who are bragging and the people who feel left out don't know if it's time or if they should wait their turn for three percent rate again which probably will never come what is the hangover time on this three percent thing now we are almost two years away from having low interest rates and we've certainly seen seven percent pretty consistently for the past i don't know 12 to 18 months, uh, when do people forget and say, you know what, 7%, I can afford that, let's go get it? Right, and, and that's where I think we're about right now. Okay. As, as a matter of fact, uh, Chief Bernanke, right. uh, today, I think I heard him on, on uh, online saying that they're asking him, what's going on? I said, you know, they said, you see, we're well into inflation here. People are struggling. People are this. What are you guys waiting for? You haven't lowered the interest rate. That was one right. of the suggestions thrown at him. And he basically said, I'm not going to talk about that. I'm not giving nobody no no right. leads of which way I'm going to lean it to. So it was just basically shut up is what he told them. Yeah, that, I, I saw some of that uh, Powell speaking, Jerome Powell speaking uh, at the um, Senate subcommittee or wherever he goes to give his uh, biannual um, meeting notice and, and what's going on at the Fed and how they're planning to. I, I think what we're going to see is – Probably September. That's what everybody's saying. Seventy-five percent chance they lower Fed interest rates, and as you and I both know, the Fed interest rate is not the mortgage interest rate, but they tend to follow one another. The, if Correct. the Fed rate goes down, mortgage interest rates are going to probably go down too. So September, and so I don't know if that is what people hear out there in the world. I mean, I I watch it because I watch Bloomberg every day, but I don't know if your average person out there who's looking to buy a house listens to that stuff. What are you telling them? Well, this, a matter of fact, this last month, uh, your, the vouchers came out for the first round of vouchers came out for the Dream for All program. Oh, you're okay. kidding! Who did you? Yeah. Get, you know, how many I of got, you people I got, got one? one? I got I, out of eight applications, one of my clients got one. So Great, that's they're they're actually looking for a house right now as we speak. They're going to go see some properties tonight with one of my agents. But um, yeah, so you, you're going to notice in the next thirty, sixty, ninety days. There should be more closings right now because they got these vouchers out there for these people to use them. So those might, uh, you know, take into account for some of the more coming upcoming sales that are about to happen. Okay, loan programs. Give me a quick rundown of, of what loan programs are, are you currently using. I know you talked a little about the 40-year, but what else are you doing? Just the conventional 30 years are the most popular. 20% down, um, 10% down, 5% down. <laughs> Uh, you know, whatever they can uh, can uh, come up with in their credit score, you know, but there's no fancy loans out there. There's, right. you know, that's basically straight income docs. If you're self-employed, then, you know, we can figure it out with 12 months deposit bank statements to find some non-QM financing. Um, different, there's other different ways for self-employed, but if you're employed with W-2, the standard is going to be either the FHA, uh, the 30 years or the conventional 30 years or the VA. 30 years because those are the most popular loans. Right so now. if you're looking for a low down payment, it's FHA. And if you're looking for maybe, you know, the, the best rate possible, you're still going with the 30 year fixed. You're just extending out the time you're going to pay it from 30 to 40. That is correct. Okay. And, and where are we on all that? What, what does a 40 year payment look like in terms of percentage wise? Are you, are you looking at like still six and a half to 7% on the 40 year? That's the 30. The 40, is, I believe, I haven't priced one out uh, lately because there's only a few banks that are doing that. Right. That's um, true. And so I haven't priced one out in the recent, but they're a little bit higher, a little bit, probably in the mid sevens. Oh, I see. Okay. Mid hey, sevens. listen, we're, we're up against it. That's a quick 10 minutes. I love having you on. You got a lot of good information and perfect person to give a call. Uh, if you could let people know how they can get in touch with you, that'd be great. Yeah. My direct number is area code 909 900 nine five six five
Excellent, George. Thanks very much for coming on. Always appreciate it. Thanks, Jeff. Appreciate it, too. Thank you very much. That's George Gonzalez from Southland Mortgage. I'm Jeff Barton, your voice in the mortgage industry. Be right back. You're listening to The Mortgage Voice with Jeff Barton. We'll be right back with more in just a moment. For questions or comments, send emails to info at malibufunding.net. Now, back to The Mortgage Voice with your host, Jeff Barton. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Jeff Barton, your voice in the mortgage industry. Thanks very much for tuning into the show, for listening to us each and every week. We bring to you some information that's going to help you in your decision-making process. I know we're getting to the middle of the summer. I know spring buying season is over. I know that you probably want a house, but you want to wait until September when the Fed might drop rates. Yes, I know. However, there is always a good time to buy And every day is another day that you have an opportunity to go out and find something you really like in the marketplace. Find a great lender and find somebody to be able to help you, guide you through this process. And when rates drop, you can always go back and refinance. I know that's a uh, a staid and true explanation of what you should do in the marketplace, but it is true. I mean, the, the opportunities are still out there. We will see inventories grow, and we will see mortgage interest rates fall. This is what's going to happen. Now, when it happens, I don't know. I'm not the prognosticator, but I do have somebody on the phone right now who may have some answers. Jennifer Martinez from Sierra Pacific Mortgage joins us now. Jennifer, how are you? I am doing well, Jeff. How are you? I'm pretty good. Well, you heard that bloated in, in introduction. <laughs> what, where do you think we are right now in this cycle? I mean, I don't know. You probably caught a lot of Jerome Powell's explanation on the Hill today. So what do you think? I mean, I do think that things are going to get better. Right. You know, I have seen um, production pick up, so that's an awesome thing. Yeah. Um, So, you know, I I think that probably the worst is behind us. Right. And so we're looking towards brighter days, hopefully sooner than later, right? And No, I I agree. And I, I think the optimism is good. I mean, we in the mortgage business have been hammered the past three years. And knowing that business is going to get better when interest rates drop, uh, we we always look towards the unemployment numbers, and those have not been great. I mean, they've been rising unemployment, but employment numbers are coming down. These are the kind of things that we say, okay, we're happy that mortgage interest rates are going to be lowered, but some people are going to be out of a job. So what are we looking at in terms of product from Sierra that we might be able to say can handle both of those possible outcomes? Well, so, you know, the California Housing Authority rolled out the Dream for All. Yep. Um, They finally have issued the vouchers. So I think that, you know, with the 1,600 vouchers, you know, we're going to see a lot of first-time homebuyers get into homes. Um, You know, the saying, you date the rate, you marry the house, I think that's absolutely true. I don't think that people should be sitting around waiting for these rates to drop. I mean, if you can afford the mortgage payment at the higher interest rate, I mean, I would definitely get out there and, you know, get into homes because once those rates drop, it's going to be a feeding frenzy again. So if you definitely have an opportunity to get into a house, I would jump at it. Um, And then, you know, refinance later down the line when rates do drop down. Now, we got a ton of equity in most properties, right? I mean, I have in my house, I'm sure that you have in your house. Most people who own a home are very happy because they've seen, you know, obviously their equity rise by about 50% in the last five years. What are you telling people who want to tap into that but not mess around with their 3% mortgage? I mean, some of them, you know, do the line of credit. Get a home equity line of credit and, you know, try to pay off your... You know, because credit card debt is at the maximum it's been in like 20 years. Yep. I so I, I think that if you can tap into that equity, then do so. I mean, in all honesty, if you look at what your credit card payments are compared to, you know, maybe a, a little bit higher of an interest rate, and it, yeah, you are going to have to get rid of that 3%, but you're also going to get rid of the 33% interest rate for your credit card debt. So you've got to look at that and maybe it makes sense. You know, if you can't do a home equity line of credit, just get rid of all that credit card debt. 
So right. I agree. I, I, I agree with that 100 percent. I mean, you know, the credit card debt has been choking on us for some time. And how do you wean people off from spending money? I mean, that's the real issue here. Not that they shouldn't spend money on a house, but should you spend money on, I don't know, some frivolous items that maybe not right now? I mean, this is... A hundred percent, yeah. I mean, it's so... If you can get rid of those payments, I mean, it may be worth getting into, like, a six-and-a-half interest rate on your first mortgage. Right. Um, so it, it's... And sometimes, like, they have to use their credit cards because, I mean, inflation is still high. Yep. So they're using it to go buy groceries, you know, that's double than what they were paying two years ago for groceries. So... I mean, it's kind of a double-edged sword. Right. So, but if you have that equity, I mean, I would probably maybe contemplate getting, you know, refinancing your house, tapping into that equity, and getting rid of some of those debts that you don't necessarily need. Well, I agree. I think debt is killing us, and I think the federal debt is killing us more. And I, at some point, somebody's going to say stop, or we're going to have an implosion, and the things that are worth something now aren't going to be worth the same things, and these are a problem. However, specifically today, what are... Give me an example of a couple of the programs that you have over at Sierra uh, to be able to, you know, help people, either first-time home buyers or in, um, you know, 30-year fixed rate. What, what are you all offering? What, what's the best programs? Well, so, I mean, I we just rolled out with this uh, W-2 Wage Earner Express. And okay. And basically it's a streamlined, um, it's a streamlined loan. So we basically, there's a couple buttons that you can press in our system, and we will pull a, a Finicity report, okay. which basically um, pulls the, like an income verification as well as an asset verification. I'm underwriting those loans in 24 hours. Um, you know, it's a one, two touch type of loan to where we're getting them closed, you know, in less than 21 days. And that's for purchases, nice. I mean, that's what I'm getting a lot of is a 21 day close. So it definitely streamlines the process. I mean, we do FHA, right? um, We do manual underwrites with FHA. So let's say you've got not so great credit. um, You know, we could definitely work with you with certain guidelines and, and get you into those homes. Um, You know, we also have, we've rolled out with bank statement programs, a 12-month and a 24-month program, as well as a DSCR, which is the um, debt service relief for the, you know, the investment properties. Right. My investment pricing and second home pricing is off the charts. It's on fire. So I'm doing a lot of that, doing a lot of um, purchase purchases for investors okay so, that's good now that, let's just uh, sit down on that for a second uh, uh, give us an overall uh, really specific picture as to uh, your investment type um, purchases that you're saying what is it the rate on fire or just the availability of funds or ease of transaction what is it I mean it's the rate okay. in all honesty it's pricing better than actually a primary residence right now <laughs> man that's unbelievable that's great yes and so, um, you know, and it, it's a streamlined process. So there right. are things that, you know, you can do. Yes, you, you know, we're putting the 20%, 25% down. But, um, you know, for, pe- for people that want to build up their portfolio, it's a great product um, to get into when you're, you know, getting a loan for seven and an eighth. Yeah. Opposed to seven and a half when you're purchasing a primary residence. So it's definitely if you have the money um, and you want to build your, your portfolio, it, it's a great product. It's it's almost mind boggling. I'm thinking, well, why would the bank do that? So I'm, I'm trying to think up questions to ask you about, uh, you know, OK, so you have this ability to be able to offer a, a cheaper rate on a second home. Is that because the second homes have more value, or if we have a downturn in the recession, these will get unloaded quickly so you don't have them on your books? What, do you, what are you thinking at in terms of, you know, the reason why that well, would be? So I think Wall Street has an appetite for them. Okay, that's and right. So I definitely feel like, you know, that's a huge part of it. Um, and, you know, the second homes are usually the ones that get offloaded first. Right. Um, opposed to your primary or an investment property, right? Right. So, um, you know, it, it's it's a great product. It's a great way to to build wealth. 
I agree 100 percent. And I also like the fact that, you know, the rates are so attractive. Well, you know, if you're in the business and this is what you do, absolutely you'd look at this. Because otherwise you go in non-QM. You know, all these investors that are paying uh, anywhere from 8 to 12 percent in, uh, in terms of a yearly, it, just to get into an investment property, now you've got something. Now, that's a second home, so you're not looking at it necessarily as an investment, but that's probably what you're selling these people to. Well, so the second home or an investment property. Oh, so same, that's uh, like same the rate. pricing is, yes, it's just, um, it's, uh, I mean, I've brought in probably a dozen this week. Right, right. Of, I'm you sure. Know, of purchases with this product. So, I mean, um, yeah, there's definitely deals being done. So. Absolutely. Well, they should give you a call. You want to shout out a way by which people can get in touch with you? That'd be great. Yeah, absolutely. So you can either reach out to me um, via email at jennifer.martinez at S as in Sam, P as in Paul, M as in Mary, C as in Kat, dot com, or give me a call at 619-502-0377. Excellent. Well, thank you very much. We've come to the end of our little talk here, and I really appreciate it. That's a lot of good information. Thank you. Well, I appreciate you, Jess. Okay. So it's always a pleasure. Always. Thank you very much, Jennifer. We'll talk soon. Okay. You have a great day. You too. That's Jennifer Martinez from Sierra Pacific Mortgage. I'm Jeff Barton, your voice in the mortgage industry. We'll be right back. You're listening to The Mortgage Voice with Jeff Barton. We'll be right back with more in just a moment. For questions or comments, send emails to info at malibufunding.net. Now, back to The Mortgage Voice with your host, Jeff Barton. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Jeff Barton, your voice in the mortgage industry. Thanks very much for tuning in to the show. Each week we come to you, we bring you this information that we hope you act on. Um, sometimes it's a wait and hold. Sometimes it's a you got to do it right now. Uh, we are in, in a time period between the spring buying season and the middle of the summer where people got to go, got to do it now. And people who can wait are going to wait to see if September is the time when the Fed drops interest rates and hopefully the mortgage interest rates will follow. I've got the best person. He comes to the show all the time. Charles Giscombe joins us again from United Security Financial to give us some answers as to really what direction you might be able to go, what kind of loan products are out there. Charles, how are you? I'm doing good, Jeff. Thanks for having me again, my friend. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate it. And uh, where are we in this market? It's so confusing. I watched Jerome Powell give testimony. I watch people bark at him for two hours. I'm like, I still don't really know what he's doing, how we're going to get there in order to satisfy so much demand and yet so little product as well as mortgage interest rates, which are scaring a lot of people out of California and maybe some other parts of the country as well. Give us your overview as to what's happening. Uh, that'd be great. Absolutely. Well, you know, the interest rate today, probably about 74 uh, on a on a thirty year, yep. uh, six point yep. seven on a fifteen year. So you know they're still steadily where they are. They haven't moved too much. They'll fluctuate up and down. Uh, you know, to increasing twelve basis points over the last seven days. But Jeff, guess what? Um, the one thing that 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 doesn't matter with that is that due to limited supply, um, the home prices hold their yep. value. So the reality of it is, is with that happening, um, the values are still there. Which always means for Jeff and I, when we're talking to everybody out there, get in the game. There's still value yeah. in the game. You still can make money. You're not losing money. Obviously, our, 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 our rational head says we don't service upside-down debt, but you're not going to because the market's holding steady. And so for traditional lending right now, there are no really great interest rates or great interest rates that we were used to two years ago. There's no more lows, twos and threes and fours and fives and sixes, <laughs> barely. Right, but right. we are still back to where we were. You still can get into the game. And even if a traditional rate is not, a traditional mortgage is not where your structure is, there are many other alternative loan programs that can help you get into this game, still help you have an opportunity to make some money or at least to get into a steady uh, investment so that when things do correct themselves, you will be able to make money, and you won't lose money. So at these cycles and where we are now, we're not really quite sure. But Powell said uh, today, he said, hey, look, we are in a normal employment cycle, meaning that we are pre-pandemic 
normal employment cycle, meaning that you're going to get numbers that are either going to indicate the economy is growing because more jobs are coming into the market, or that the unemployment rate goes up, which means less jobs. Um, and that really affects how we look at a borrower, whether they got a job, obviously, right? But in the realm of investment properties, what, what are we looking at different than a traditional loan in a 30-year fixed rate from Fannie Mae? Well, you know what? Although the economy, Jeff, uh, has proven itself to be more resilient than expected, right. <laughs> despite what everyone else is saying and the uncertainties, um, I feel like the investment market and getting into it, well, Jeff had mentioned, is probably a better involved compared to the traditional way. Right. There are a lot of investment property uh, programs, uh, fix and flip pro uh, programs, you know, hold and rent, uh, DSCR loans. These are all loans that individuals can get into without providing the full traditional mortgage structure and vote. Right. That's Meaning, what I'm getting at. Right. Exactly. And that means and that means two years of tax returns or W-2s. That means 60 days of bank statements, which is two months. That means 30 days of paycheck stubs, which means four weeks to, or biweekly or so basically, when you have that, when you when you're required to have that, that is a traditional loan. What Jeff is referring to is the ability to get into the investment market if you have uh, capital that will allow you to use less documentation. And in most cases, what they call it is a no doc. I know people are not, you know, used to no docs were very you know, a long time ago. There was a no doc loan and everyone was using it, and then it went away. Well, now they're back. They're called stated stated loans, and they're called no doc loans. And real quick, I'll tell you, they don't require W-2s, paycheck stubs, tax returns. They only require that you show the money that you have in the bank as a down payment or reserves. And it doesn't matter if the money is a seasoned or not. You can utilize those funds even if they've gotten to your account the day before. As long as they come wow. from you, your business account and your personal account, you're allowed to utilize those funds as your down payment and reserves. The other thing is you can close in an entity name. When an entity name, what we mean is an LLC or a corporation, whether it's an S corp or a C corp, or even a trust. As long as it's not in a revocable trust, you can close in a revocable trust. The benefits of these is to create protection for yourself. It also acts as the as the, the guarantor on the loan. So now your bills come in those entity names. The biggest and and, and the biggest value added service to a loan like this is that the, these mortgages and liabilities don't show up on your personal name. Where you can do that at, I don't know, but we can do it here, Jeff. And the beautiful thing is we would love to provide some of those things to individuals. What kind of a down payment and credit score you need on a loan like that? Surprisingly, obviously, there are some programs that on these programs that will start anywhere from 65% LTV, which is 35 down, 75, 25 down, on up. There are some of these programs that we can get you into an investment property or fix and flip with 10% down. Wow. Same type of loan. So there, there are many different loan products out there depending on where you are. Now, Jeff said it best. The, it's important for the credit scores for these. Okay. Right. So, But the minimum credit score that we can work in, and I'm going to say this, and I know the phones are going to go crazy, Jeff, but we <laughs> can get into some of these loans dependent on the LTV with a 580 FICO score. Okay, so 580, non-QM, you must have, what, 35% down? Is that the way they'll do it? Well, in this loan, you can have, yeah, 35% or 30% down. Okay. And if you have a FICO score above 650, it's 25% down. Yeah, all well, that's really good, and I'm and I'm sure if you have a seven seven forty in that range, you you get even less down. You get less down, you get a better interest rate, and you have more options. So all of this is designed to really help people with, you know, obviously challenges, or they're looking at maybe not a traditional type loan, but something to get into, sink their teeth into, and with the different options that they have, it becomes an attractive property. Uh, an attractive loan for them to get into. Absolutely, Jeff. It's an attractive loan. And it's also built for individuals, once again, that don't have traditional financial structure right. or, or a traditional job. Someone that's home every day working for themselves, um, it's more importantly to keep their money as opposed to, you know, it's not, it's not what you make, it's what you keep. And in a lot of cases, 
you know, if you're not providing your tax returns and different stuff, uh, the, the entrepreneurs look for these type of loans so they don't have to provide that. Because I'll tell you, if you're an entrepreneur, most times you're writing everything off, and so your income on tax return statements don't look as high, even though you may be doing very well for yourself. Mm-hmm. But guess what will always look good? Your bank statements, whether they're commercial or personal, um, whether they're an LLC or personal, your bank statements show the real deposits that's coming through. And that's a beautiful thing because as long as you can show the ATR, which we always talk about here, which is the ability to repay, right. if you can show that, that there's a loan for you out there. And this is a great loan that an individual who doesn't have the traditional struct financial structure can get into a loan. A lot of people feel like it's worth the down payment to have the path of least resistance to get involved with this market still and still having these properties have value and not losing or being upside down. Listen, we got about a minute left on, on uh, the refinance of a loan like this, especially if it's an LLC. Um, any issues with that come up later if somebody wants to get out of the loan they're in and maybe get a lower interest rate on a similar type loan in, say, less than a year? Any issues with that? No, there is really no issues. The one thing about it is a lot of lenders that we utilize, uh, they will have a prepayment penalty because they don't have a lot of fees. They don't have a lot of fees up front. So they're looking to you to stay in that loan longer so that the interest payments that they make are the money that they make. The beautiful thing is they give you the option to buy the prepayment penalty down to 12 months or less. And so that way, you're in this property, you use it as a strategy to get into a property, but within 12 months or less, you can refinance into a traditional loan or another loan that may have a better interest rate when the interest rates correct themselves. So this is another great strategy for individuals to get into loans uh, from a strategic standpoint on a short-term strategy, and then in the longer-term strategy, when the interest rates do correct themselves, you can refinance into a traditional loan, or you can refinance into another loan similar to this with a lower interest rate. It's all there for you. All you have to do is reach out and make sure that you get an informed uh, uh, loan officer. Right. Loan exactly. Officer. exactly. Like yourself. And <laughs> speaking of that, could you shout out a way by which people might be able to get in touch with you? That'd be great. I sure will. Absolutely. Jeff, you can reach me at 725-577-8761. Again, that's 725-577-8761. Or you can reach me at cgiscombe at usfwholesale.net. Charles, thanks very much. Once again, coming on, doing a great job. Appreciate it. Thank you, Jeff, for having me always. Uh, thank you very much. That's Charles Giscombe from United Security Financial. I'm Jeff Martin, your voice in the mortgage industry, and we'll see you next time. You're listening to The Mortgage Voice with Jeff Martin. For more on today's topic, visit www.malibufunding.net. Thank you, Inland Empire, for listening to K 